Game Maker How to give the player some shields. Now these could be shields where they pick an object up, they earn the shields, or they hit a key on their keyboard and it turns the shields on. Okay, I'll sort of show you both ways here. Okay, way number one. We're going to do this all inside of the player. You'll see I have a little game here already set up with our basic project called Player Shields where these guys are hurting the player and I'm losing life. Let's take care of that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the player a variable. And I'm going to give them the variable called shields. And when the program starts, I'm just going to have shields at zero. And when the shields are zero, that means that there's no shields and the player is going to get hurt. Now, they need to get shields at some point. So uh, just to make this sort of simple, one thing I could do is I could just say add event, key press, letter S. Okay, now however you want to give them the shields, you decide. You know, they could pick up an object or whatever, but I'll just say they hit the S key, they get their shields. So then I'll say shields equals one to indicate that the shields are now on. Now, once those shields are on, one thing I could do, I'll go back later on, is I'll only make them last for a couple seconds, right? Then we'll turn them off. Or you can make it so the shields start to wear down. So I'll do that in another video too, just to give you a few options for your games. So what are we going to do with the shields equals one? We're going to go to your events where the player gets hit by stuff, and you can now add a little bit of code to protect you. So you see the hit by ball here causing us to lose life. What I have to do is I have to change this a little bit here. So I can leave this alone with the other. They get hit. There's a little bit of a ring. But what I can do with the hit point value here is I don't want to do that all the time if they get hit. So what I could do is I could just say this. I could wrap all of this up inside an if statement. And I could say if shields are 1, actually, let's do this here. If shields are 0, then I have to do all this code. I'll destroy that one, and I'll take some life off of me. Whoa, my cursor's doing funny things here. And so it looks something like this. So that's the case where they have no shields. Now you may ask yourself, well, if they do have shields, what am I going to do? Am I still going to make the ring? Well, if you're still going to make this effect and destroy it, even if you have the shields on, which is probably a good idea, maybe you say, you know what, take this. You don't want that to be in the if statement, right? You always want to be destroying it and making the ring. Okay, but in terms of the damage... Yeah, only do the damage if the shields are off. Okay, if the shields are set to 1, then you have protection, right? You don't take any damage. So, does this work? Let's hit the S key and find out. So, I'm taking damage. I hit the S key. And now I'm not taking damage anymore. So, one thing you could do here is you could say, you know what, if I do take damage, maybe you put that in there and you make this a red ring. Then you could have your other if statement here, else if shields is 1, maybe you do a similar code. But with this one, you sort of show you're protected Maybe that's just going to be a yellow ring, right? But notice, no hit points being taken off. Let's give this a test. Oh, it doesn't like that. I've missed a curly brace somewhere. Curly, curly, curly. There we go. So shields goes on. And now I've sort of got protection, right? Now, do shields ever die? Yeah, shields can die. Um, I'm going to do that one a little later. Let's work on something a little different now is 
if the shields are on, usually you want to have some sort of visual effect, right? To let the player know that the actual shields are there. So let's try uh, something just quick and cheap and fast that we can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sprite here. And I'm going to make a new sprite. So I'm going to go S shields. And let's just edit this one. And really quickly, I'm going to make this one. So it's just a circle. I won't take too much time here. Let's do the yellow. Let's set the alpha to maybe 100. And not the best, but good enough, right? Those are my shields. Actually, you know what? This may not be enough alpha. Let's step that up a bit. There we go. Those are my shields. Center that. Hit OK. And then I'm going to go inside of uh, any object that can draw. Let's just take the player for now. And I'm going to go inside the draw event. So draw event. Draw. Now this is where all drawing is taken care of. If you haven't done any of the tutorials that involve the draw event, you should probably go peek at one. Uh, this will make a little more sense. But what I'm going to do in the draw event is I'm just going to ask a quick question about the shields. So I'm going to say something like this. If the shields variable is 1, I'm going to draw the shields out. So draw a sprite. Sprite shields at the player's x and y. Whoops. Frame negative 1, which just means pick whatever the next frame of the animation is. My shields and thing doesn't even have an animation, so this doesn't really matter too much. Draw it at the player's X and Y location. And close it off. Now, you're going to notice something here. Let's just give this a go. This is especially if you haven't done the tutorials on draw. You're going to notice my player's gone now. But when I do hit S and I turn my shields on, I do see my shields. So at least that part's good. Now, the reason my player disappeared there is... You have to remember, as soon as you put any code inside the draw, that is what this object is going to draw. You don't get to see them anymore. So we have to have that little extra line to draw the player sprite out. So player draw sprite. Um, the player has some sprite. I don't even have to name it. I'll just call it sprite index. Because remember, I'm changing the player sprite around as I make them walk around. So you can just say sprite index, negative 1, X comma Y. And that's it. That'll draw the player's sprite, which has been set to something before. So that's very generic. This one, yeah, you have to say shields because you're trying to draw the shield sprite for this one, right? Now this should work nicely. We should see the player. When they have shields on, hit S. I know it looks bad. You guys make it look a little bit better, right? But then I have my player shields. Now the shields are on top of the player there. I can actually make one little change. Draw the shields first. Then draw the player. That looks a little better, right? And of course if you make your shields look nice. Then uh, this will look a little nicer when it runs. But it gives you the basics to get started. Shields goes on. Now you're protected. No life. Now, really quickly, if you haven't done any power-up videos, uh, you don't know how to turn the shields off. But uh, let's just quickly add that in here. When they hit the S key, or whatever it is that gives them shields, what you can do is you can turn an alarm on. I'll set this one to 3 seconds. 30 steps a second times 3 is 90 steps long. And when this alarm tick-tocks down, it'll eventually fire off alarm 0. And when that alarm zero goes off, all I'm going to do is shields goes back to zero and the shields are gone. And hit OK. We give us a little run. I'll turn my shields on. I'm protected. 90 steps later, the shields turn off. Not too bad. You can make some variables. Count how many times the players can use shields. Maybe give the players some energy. Right? But nice little effect. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can use that in your video. See you next time.